Hello, hello, and welcome, or welcome back to DS Tech Media. I'm Jay, and today I'm going to be showing you a piece of software for recording audio. Audacity has long been the go-to application for music and audio recording. However, in recent years, there was a scandal with their parent company, Muse, over collecting users' data. Because it's open source software and part of the larger open source community, this was not well received at all. And Audacity subsequently fell out of favor in a relatively short period of time. Now, I personally prefer to use Ocean Audio for a long while now. By the way, I'd like to take this moment to shamelessly plug. If you find this video useful at all, hit that like button and consider subscribing and sharing this video with someone you know that might find it useful. I'm currently working on a documentary about the PlayStation, so subscribe so you don't miss that. So as I was saying, Ocean Audio is my preferred editor for basic recording. Unfortunately, Ocean Audio is not open source software. So there's a lot of people that are going to be put off by that. The framework behind it is a university research product developed in cooperation with a telecom company. So if open source is an absolute must have, I would then direct you to the fork of Audacity called Tenacity, which is open source and as far as I know is under active development. But if you're still interested in Ocean Audio, it is available for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, and they even publish distro-specific packages for Linux Mint, Ubuntu, and Debian. It has all of the basic functions that I need, and if you're still interested, stick around because I'm going to walk you through all of the notable features. There's been a lot of good improvements to it recently. All right, all right. So here we've got Ocean Audio 3.13, the latest version. If we're starting a new project. We can set our sample rate to 44, 48, all the way up to 192,000. We can do up to eight multi channels and we can do 16, 24, and 32 bit. We also have the ability to open up multiple files quickly swipe between them up here and over here our history of recent files we've been working on we got a navigator if you're working with something big you can easily grab the section that you need we got our audio metering over here and there's also scoring mini meter down here i prefer the full size one click any file over here we can swap channels, convert to mono, convert sample type, split to mono files, extract left or right channels, open file locations, sort, copy, path name, blah, 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 blah. Uh, under audio properties, we got statistics, set all your ID3 data here. You can even artwork, so uh, the artwork's over here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if we click the speaker here, it'll open up our sound preferences. For the mixer backend, you got also jack and pulse since we're on Linux. Device options, you can switch between those. Uh, play only visible portion of the audio, that's useful. A scroll view to follow playhead. Playhead follows cursor and selections. Move cursor to playback stop position. Pause playback on markers, so when the playback reaches a marker such as this one, it would pause it. Under record options, we've got switching between different devices. We can playback through one device and record through another. You can set your pre-roll here. Replace existing audio in overwrite mode. And it also has pretty reliable backup support. In older versions, it would crash sometimes. And when you open it up, it detects those backed up audio files and they're even saved as backup. They're distinct from the one that you save it as. Under general, we can change our theme. So we got a light theme, which is 
brutal. Classic, uh, aqua, light, dark classic, dark aqua, and then just dark theme. Smooth the cut and delete boundaries. Edit label when creating a region marker. Uh, key bindings. Uh, we got spectrogram. I haven't even showed you the spectrogram yet. You can switch between different algorithms that plot the spectrogram. And then we got the color scheme. And I can show you that in a second. I do not understand what the network does. I assume that that has something to do with running VST plugins. Under plugins, I do not have any here. Uh, if I want those, I'll use something else like LMMS or Reaper or Ardor. I use this more for doing uh, overdub dialogues for my videos. I don't go ahead and switch to the spectrogram view. The waveform view shows you volume, whereas this shows you frequency. And it's called Mako, like Final Fantasy VII. Linear grayscale, grayscale color, Veritas, Magma, Plasma, Inferno, Civitas, Mako, Rocket, Turbo, Copper, Hot, Bone. And we can also do both. And I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and record some audio. So, as you can see, it runs pretty smoothly. Load up on guns and bring your friends. It's fun to lose and to pretend. So I'm going to highlight that. And if I wanted to lower the load up on guns and bring. You can adjust the gain there. Up here in the top, we got cut. Copy, paste, delete, trim, normalize, silence, reverse. And then we've got fade in. This one is the uh, gain tool, which I already showed you. Also, when we highlight this, we get the drag selection or the drag a screenshot. So drag selection, if I do that, we get a new file with the selection that we had. We also have this option to drag a screenshot. However, I try and drag it into my file manager and it says operation not supported. So I guess that's just a bug because you cannot drag a screenshot. And then we've got create visual paste, create visual fade in, create visual fade out, and create visual crossfade. I'm going to copy everything, put it towards the end here, and we're going to do a visual paste. The visual paste is actually kind of interesting. You get all these little uh, handles. Uh, they allow you to shape the sound, uh, shape the in and the out. All right, now we're gonna do create a visual fade in. So if you just do the standard fade in, it doesn't give you any control over it. If you do the visual fade in, we can actually shape it. So we can choose how long the fade in is. Then we can go to the opposite end and create a visual fade out. Dirty word. We've also got crossfade. Create visual fade out and fade in. We're doing both ends at once. And then the final one is create visual audio ducking. It's fun to lose and to... But you got uh, these additional little options here. You've got change fade in and out curve. We open those up and we get the different type of curves. Linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic, sine. And then you can also set the curve to be accelerating, decelerating, accelerate, then decelerate. And we can also sync them up so that they do the same thing on both sides. So those are your big new features that weren't present before. Let's dive into the effects. So we've got silence, reverse, invert, smooth, remove DC, normalize. We've got amplitude, which includes all the fade ins, crossfades. For filter, we've got low, high, band, and band stop. So let's try, I guess. A... Load up on guns. There's an 11 and a 31 band graphic equalizer. There's presets, and we can save presets as well. Delay and flanger. Load up on guns, load up on guns. And then we got dynamics processing. Compressor, 
And then we've also got the uh, time and pitch. Bone guns bring you automatic noise removal. So here I'm recording the microphone with no gating or envelope filter. And so there's a lot of noise. You can hear the computer running over there, probably the ceiling fan. Let's go to effects, noise reduction, and we'll do automatic noise reduction. So here I'm recording the microphone with no so yeah, includes automatic noise removal, which is pretty important. So here I have a little bit of a more uh, complex project that I've put together just as a demo. I'm doing this after the fact during the editing process, which is mostly done. So I, I threw this together just to give you an idea of, you know, what you can do. Uh, here we've got four channels. So we got a left, right, and a left and a right. Uh, two different uh, versions of the vocal and then so that there is actually guitar that I've run through down sampling trying to make it into the bass line there it is with less processing Those are the lead parts. And by the way, I recorded all of these coming out of the amp with a microphone across the room. So the quality is not great. I did this on the fly just to kind of give you an idea of how complex you can get with it. Here's the final product. Load up on guns, bring your friends, it's fun to pretend. Another thing I did was lowered my voice. So here, you know what? Well, we'll just go ahead and do it here. I'll show you. Time and pitch adjust. I'll knock it down. I guess another one. Friends, it's fun to lose and to pretend she's over. But yeah, there you go. There's kind of a more complex use case for it. I just want to make sure that you can see how you do have the ability to grab the multiple channels if you so please or the individual channels as well. And when it comes to exporting, you have a ton of options here, including raw MS adaptive DPCM, DVI MA adaptive DPCM, Creative Labs AD PCM, which I believe is a technology available on the PlayStation, by the way. Various types of wave and as low as 8 bits. Control over the dithering. You got IMA4, Apple Lossless, Double Precision, IEEE -E -E Floating Point Pulse Control Modulation, uh, MPEG 3N2, MP4, FLAC, AUG Vorbis, AUG Opus, AUG FLAC, and then others. Next, Sun File Format. But yeah, just a ton of options for exporting. If you have a bunch of files open, you can save them all uh, at the same time. Take audio screenshots such as this one. Pretty awesome. And so there you have it. That is Ocean Audio. It is my go-to editor for basic audio recording. I'm actually using it right now to record the audio you're hearing. And I do wish that it was open source, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I'm using video drivers that aren't open source. So, and to be clear, I didn't use Audacity because of the way it looked, mainly. I wasn't really worried about the telemetry data and that whole scandal. I never really used it in the first place, so it wasn't a problem for me. Anyways, I hope you found this helpful. Please do share it with people you think will get some use out of it. Also, if you made it this far, for the love of all that is holy, please hit the like button and subscribe and stay tuned because i'm working on a pretty cool documentary about the sony playstation i'm pretty excited about i think it's going to be awesome lots of cool things planned in the future 
I'm Jay, and I thank you for watching DS Tech Media, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.